Hi guys, James here from Hayes Machinery. Here we have the Still MS500i, all 79.2 cc's of it. We've all seen plenty of videos of performance and different people from around the world testing this saw and showing us what it's all about and how to do it. But what we haven't seen very much is what's actually on the inside of the saw. And this is a, actually a customer saw of ours and they have brought it in for repair because they managed to fell a four ton oak tree on it. As I can see from here, it's got a few breakages. So we're gonna strip the saw apart and see what's broken on it, then identify a few other parts and see what's on the inside see what's going on with this saw so you guys can see what's in there we can see what's in there because we haven't taken very many of these apart yet and go from there and see what we find so i'm now going to take the saw apart okay so that's the, pretty much the basic parts of the saw stripped down. Already see some very, very different things going on with this saw compared to other saws on the market and compared to its other steel friends in the family. One of the first noticeable things is here is the control unit that they've got in the back of the saw here, which controls the fuel injection system. And the other thing is the port on the exhaust I notice is rather large. Quite a big port there coming out. But you've still got a nice view of the piston there. You can see that the piston is nice and clean. There's no scoring or anything on the piston. And there's plenty of compression there, which is good. So I'm going to get this saw all cleaned off, get all the components cleaned off. We'll meet you back here to see what we found. So I've now cleaned off all the saw through our parts washer. Nothing better than working on a cleaner saw. And as you can get the nice thing about going around with the brush and everything, you can see other bits that you may have missed to start with. So another thing I've found is that the back handle here on the um, trigger is broken. Um, and like I said, on the a few bits on the crankcase there as well. So I'll just run you through a little few other bits of bits and bobs I found on the saw. So a lot of impulse and fuel pipes going on here. I believe there's four in total on this saw, um, going in and around the back of the saw there. Obviously the main difference on the MS500i is that there's no choke. Because it's fuel injected, you pump this on eight times and then pull the saw over till it starts. And then you just got the main stop button, which automatically goes back to the, to the start position. So what we found so far is a broken back cover. It's obviously where the main brunt of the tree possibly hit it on the back there, which hopefully is only the back cover, but we'll strip that apart and see what's going on in there. So the surround on this one is broken, so the mount won't sit in there correctly anymore. And the other one is on the front here where the dogging teeth join on to the saw is broken up through there. So it's had a fair pounding. So I think the biggest thing here is obviously with everything, there's no plastics broken. They have managed to manage to survive. Um, so it's just only mainly the crankcase, which is a bit of a shame. It'd be easier if it was a piece of plastic, but we're gonna get this one stripped down some more and all of the parts up and put it all back together and hopefully have a running saw again. So another major bit I've noticed, which I forgot to say about just now, is that obviously a spark plug cap on the top of the saw would normally come round through in front of the inlet manifold and down to the coil and would have a coil pack there on the side. But obviously with the MS500i it's very, very different. So your HT lead actually goes down into the control unit and is controlled from there. And then inside, in behind the flywheel, you've got a generator and a controller. So that's what I was sorry, it's a generator and a sensor. So a generator and a sensor in, in behind the flywheel. So we'll get that one stripped off and have a look in behind there and have a look, see what's going on. So we've got a little bit more apart now. You know, everything's very different than any other saw I've ever worked on, as you'll probably find yourselves. Um, obviously lots of fuel hoses and everything going on here. The um, control module, which sits in there. Um, and then in there is your little injection system, which just replaces your carburetor, which I'm not that keen on taking apart, to be quite honest, um, but we'll see. Luckily, we've got some fantastic guys who work for us who probably know a lot more about this than I do, but we'll see. We've got to get the flywheel off still, take the clutch off, take the brake lever and everything off, take the cylinder and piston out, and um, aim for stripping down for the crankcase. So we'll see how I get on then.
Hi guys and girls. So, right, we have now stripped everything apart. The saw is in a million pieces, just the way we like it. But I'm gonna run you through all the bits that are broken. So what we've got, we have got the main fuel tank and trigger assembly. This one is broken on the back here. So we've got where the tree has come down and hit onto that handle, it's squashed the handle there. Um, if it has only been used domestically, we would probably get away with it. But as it's a commercial saw, then it definitely needs replacing because it wouldn't last very long. And then on the main handle, it has snapped in the bottom where the, where the tree has come down and hit that and caused fatigue and snapped. So that one needs replacing. And then the main right-hand crank case. So the crank case here, you can see there that the, um, where the dogging teeth go onto the saw, that one has snapped off where the tree has hit it. And um, also the engine, where the engine mount goes here, or the handle mount where the handle clips in on the side of the saw, goes in down through there, that one there is broken. So that one needs replacing. And then there is a possible fracture up through the crankcase, but it's not overly thing. But so we didn't, we haven't actually done a pressure test on, the, on, on this, but because that needs replacing, there wasn't really much need. So we'll obviously do that once we've got the saw back together, check it's all okay before we start. So that's the main issues we found with the saw. So yeah, a few, few observations as we've gone through. Um, we've got on the other, I've managed to take the crank off, as you probably saw from the sped up video, that I've managed to keep the, the awkward bit, which all joins into there. So on, the, on this side of the crankcase, you've got the generator. So that piece of the generator there, and then you've got the sensor back here. So as I, before, there's no coil on a 500i, and um, you've got the generator there, which generates power through to the control unit. And then your HT lead comes off of your control unit and goes to your spark plug rather than coming directly off of a coil. So you've then got the generator there and then you've got a sensor in behind um, the generator, which is obviously what's counting revolutions and controlling what's going on with the saw and feeding information back to the control unit to tell the saw what to do, when to feed air, when to feed the fuel and everything through the injector. So yeah, the other observation then is the injector itself, which you've got a lovely little jet just inside there, a little baby injector, which is quite cute. Um, and that one just, obviously from the video you can see, that just goes on pretty much where the carb would onto the inlet manifold. Um, well, that is the inlet manifold there, and then everything goes back through to the injector. The other observation was the throttle body, which would normally be all part of the carburetor, is its own little standalone throttle body, uh, which very easily goes on the back of here and clips in, and then your throttle goes on there and boom, boom, boom. Again, inside the throttle body, we're just in between the throttle body and the injector, there is a um, little stainless steel collar, which is very easily lost, so make sure you don't lose that one. The um, control unit itself, where the HD lead kind of joins into, um, I haven't actually looked up the price of one of these, but I should imagine it's fairly interestingly priced. Um, but these are, one thing to bear in mind is if you do replace a control unit, it definitely has to be, the saw needs to be backed up onto the steel software first before you replace a control unit. So you can do lots of different strange things to the saw, like over revving and everything, um, if not doing that first. So that would definitely need to be done by a main steel dealer like ourselves. Um, but the annoying thing was we found was when we unplugged all the connectors out of the control unit, there's some little rubber grommets which come in or come out of there. Um, I've tried getting one out, a one back in with little success. So. I think I'm gonna take that back to my bench and do that off camera where I'm not under so much pressure. But we'll see, we'll try and get them back in again. Hopefully I do, otherwise that's an expensive unit. Should be fine. Um, cylinder, piston, bore, everything, all that looks absolutely fine, clean as a whistle. Um, I don't think there's any other broken bits. Yeah, but no, that's pretty much it. So what we're gonna do now is get the parts ordered. Um, we're going to clean up all the last little bits before we put, reassemble everything. And then we'll film putting it all back together again and see how we get on. So last night after all of our technicians and our main workshop went home, I went up to clean everything off which needed to have a bit more of a clean. But what I found is that the bearings on the crankshaft do sound a little bit nasty. So I don't know if you can hear that on the, from, the, from the mic. They're both sounding pretty terrible. So I put them in the press, got them all pulled off and yeah, I've managed to do it keeping the generator and sensor and everything on the crankcase itself. So that hasn't been in the way. I know I probably should have removed it to start with, but I started like it, so I've carried on. But yeah, so we're gonna get two new bearings and seals and everything ordered up as well. Hopefully, I don't know yet, but the, hopefully the 
bearing will turn up in one in one crankshaft half and then the other one will have to get pressed into there but we will need to do that in our main workshop in the press so but yeah we'll um, get that ordered get that put back together and um, go from there so some of the parts have now turned up and i've started reassembling the saw so far i've pressed in the bearings on the that side of the crankcase and i've pushed in the crankshaft and now i'm just about to wind down this side of the crankcase with the old screws i'll then take them out and put the new screws in and torque them up and then start reassembling the saw and hopefully we'll get a working saw again fairly soon Right guys, so we have our MS500i back together. Hopefully correct. We'll find out in a minute whether we'll see if it starts or not. But I'm just going to run through bits that we've replaced on the saw. So the first one was the crankcase, um, or the right hand side of the crankcase because of the splits and things that's in it. So that's been done. Uh, obviously crankcase gas gasket. The bearings on both sides of the crankcase have been replaced because they were a little bit noisy. The main petrol tank and trigger assembly because of the crack in the back of the handle. That's been replaced. We are still waiting for the main plastic on the back of the saw here on that handle for the simple reason that it's got a split in here and it's not sitting correctly so the dead man's handle isn't working correctly. Trigger's all fine but until we get that bit there's no point fiddling around with that. The carry wrap around handle has been replaced on the whole saw. Lots of stretch bolts and head bolts and bits and pieces have all been replaced as we've gone through. And the chainsaw bar. So the main bar has got bent on the end there so obviously it's had a fairly big hit. So unfortunately, there were more parts than we originally thought that were needed on this saw, but that's what we find sometimes, so at least get down to stripping it right down and replacing what you think is necessary. Sometimes you find other things. So hopefully we're gonna have a running chainsaw, albeit an expensive one, but definitely learned some lessons. We found out what's been inside the saw, looked at the generator, looked at the sensor, looked at the control unit, how different it is compared to other chainsaws. So, you know, I hope this video has been informative um, from what's on the inside, at least, um, and, you know, you'll take some information back from this. I know we have, and we now know what's on the inside. So any questions, please give us a shout. But in a minute, we're gonna fuel it up, oil it up, and hopefully we've got a working chainsaw. If not, we'll start again. Right guys, so we've come up to our main workshops just so that I can disturb our colleagues um, during the day, which I said I wouldn't, but I've done it. Just so that we can get this 500i plugged into the steel diagnostic SDS system, um, just to make sure everything's all updated and ready to go. So hopefully I'm not gonna disturb them all too much, but they've, um, yeah, they're all busy doing bits and pieces around the shop. And, um, and then hopefully we'll get a start very soon. Right guys, so here we are. The MS500i is all back together. And hopefully we're now gonna do a test to make sure it works. But the pressure's on a little bit because we've got six of our technicians up there eagerly waiting to see if I've done this right. Because I know they would have, but let's see if I have.
So there we have it. Albeit a little bit smoky from all the oil that's in the piston, but she starts up, revs up. So now in a minute, we're gonna do a better warm up and just get a letter, get going, and then we'll um, do a bit of cutting with it.